Joe's in Jacksonville, Florida. Hi, Joe. How are you? Hey, guys. How are you? Better than we deserve. What's up? Well, I really need your advice, but I told my wife I did not want to call and get the public Dave Ramsey smackdown because I know I've been stupid. <laughs> but I am a uh, step six repeat offender because I'm a real estate addict. And every time we do our quiet, debt-free scream, I manage to go out and do stupid again and, and buy another real, rental real estate property. But the question I have is we have a mortgage I want to eliminate on step six again. And how much or how do we best wisely calculate our emergency fund? How deep can I go? We have the ability to pay it off. But the emergency fund for our personal income is one question. But then I guess the real question is, for the rental portfolio, how much of a capital reserve do we need? Yeah, good for you. Well, your personal is three to six months of expenses. Um, on a business, and that's what a rental portfolio is, it's a business, you would have what we call retained earnings. And... Um, you know, retained earnings would go for emergencies, uh, repairs, like, for instance, a heating and air goes out or something like that. And it would also, uh, you would also build and, and calculate your retained earnings, if you're doing it well, uh, for replacement of large items. Like, say, you've got a roof uh, that's going to need to be replaced in five years, and you need want to be setting aside a fifth of that roof each year so that it doesn't sneak up on you, you know? And so you... We've got a, you know, we got a apartment complex that the parking lot's going to have to be redone, um, and you know, and that's a, a hundred thousand dollar expense or whatever it is, right? And uh, we got three years to do that though, so we're going to put thirty three thousand aside for three years, you know, that kind of a thing. So you would systematically build into your major repairs to keep you from having, uh, you know, something quote unquote sneak up on you that shouldn't really sneak up on you. Uh, and then the second thing you would hold is just retained earnings for the totally unexpected. Uh, but how many houses have you got now? We have uh, 19 and um, about 23 different units within that. Yeah. Have you got a pre – how long have you been doing this? About 20 years. Yeah. You, you got know, a pretty we, good – I had a career. You probably got a pretty good set of books that you, you could probably look back and say – you know, here, uh, uh, you know, average per house or average per ten houses or something. Uh, here's what my unexpected repairs are: water heaters and heat and air. Um, you know, whatever else. And you know, you've got replacement carpet replacement, paint replacement on turnover. That's standard tenant stuff, right? Um, not not every time you turn them over, but occasion every every two or three times you turn them over, you're gonna have to go through and hit that inside pretty hard. We do anyway. Uh, and so on. You're probably used to doing all that. I would say your P and L's, if you look back through them, would inform your uh, retained earnings pretty accurately. Uh, and in combination with that, I would look forward and say, what are known replacements and repairs that are large that I've got coming in the next five to ten years, three to ten years, and you know, or whatever. And let's add that in there too. And somewhere in there is going to give you a real common sense number on the retained earnings. Okay. Our, our consistent experience has been about 50% of the gross revenue goes to manage and retain the business. Yeah. And then we cash flow about 50%. Yeah. That sounds, that doesn't sound unusual. Um, so and if we, if we cash flow, it depend, depend on the age of the properties that, that, you know, if it's a newer property, it shouldn't be that high, but, um, you know, if these are 10 year old, 15 year old properties, you probably are seeing that because your heating and air starts. So should we, should we, should we um, keep retain a full year's worth of expenses in, in reserve then? No, I'd take six, six months. Okay. You know, uh, Great. because you've not you've not had any cash flow. You're managing your cash already. Um, you know, you're joking around about you continue to go back into debt. That's a different issue. But you're already managing your cash. You've been doing this too long. you got too many properties. If you were doing it poorly, it would already knocked you off the saddle. Yeah, I did. I want to knock out this last mortgage i just didn't know how aggressive i yeah. could be with my reserves well i mean obviously it's kind of like your personal if you take it down to to a thousand dollars and you pay off your house heat and air will go out the next day you know so you don't you don't want to invite murphy to the party so let's just 
you know, let's give it a little little wiggle room here and not go too too aggressive. But also, you don't need a year and a half's worth of cash sitting there while you got a mortgage. You, know, you, you can reach over and knock out with with a few months of that reserve. And but it, it's like any other business; you can plan out your known. You, you get a rhythm of the emergencies once you've got enough volume like you've got. If you had two houses, yeah. it's harder to do. But when you've got 20 and 23 units, you can, you can start to get some averages, and you've been doing it a while, and, and you'll, get, you'll get pretty accurate on it. So real estate for me, is it's a fascinating topic. I feel like even right now in our world, not just with the housing prices being up, but this is more – I mean, I feel like more than ever hearing people trying to get in to – real estate investing mm-hmm. and it being part of their world. I mean, it's, it feels like it's everywhere. And obviously, uh, you know, Joe's been doing this for a long time, but do you feel like there's been a resurge, like a surge of that too, versus 10 years ago? Yeah, there was a really last spring. We talked about it a lot. There was a real move and you could feel it in social media and you could feel it with Gen Z. There was this move of get rich quick real estate pop back up which kind of was like making real estate cool again. Yeah, so talk talk, you know, talk yeah. to everyone about the wisest way to do it, because we teach cash, but a lot mm-hmm. of people are like, that seems, that's impossible. There's no impossible. way I could get in Not impossible, to the market. you just got to have the cash. <laughs> it's not impossible at all. You got to wait till you have the cash. And it's, uh, so what it amounts to is to buy that first property, if you're buying houses, for example, and let's say you're going to buy a $200,000 rental property, which is not that unusual in a lot of cities. Some of your cities, it, that's not possible. But just call it that, and you go, okay, I'm going to save forty grand a year for five years. It takes a little while yeah. to get the first one. But when you get the first one, then you've got the cash flow off of that, and you've got no payments. And so you could throw that at the savings for the next one. And by the time you've got three or four, uh, pretty quickly you can buy a house a year off of the income from the houses. You know, uh, that kind of a thing. So it snowballs in a good way that way. The, s- the snowball rolls over and over. And that's how we did it. Right. We, sh- we first bought houses. Um, and then 2008 hit, and I was sitting on a bunch of cash. And we got into a bunch of commercial at pennies, at 15 cents on the dollar. It was ridiculous. So the weird thing is, if you'll be patient and get yourself in a cash position, you'll find deals. And you'll find the market slows. And there's a moment in time where you can jump in. I've never, I've been in real estate business 30 plus years in one way or another, and I've never seen anything as good as that 2008 was. It was wonderful for buying. For buying, yeah. For buying, because we were buying at pennies on the dollar. And I don't know that I'll ever see it again, but Mm -hmm. I made a lot of money that year, two years. 